Hence, this is the structure of the natural resource, non-renewable natural resource extraction and consumption model, as we saw uh, at the end of the first lesson. Uh, we are not considering uh, uh, renewable resources and we are uh, uh, considering extraction cost that uh, depends only from uh, fossil fuel extraction for, for simplify a bit uh, the, the mathematics. So we have the extraction of uh, fossil fuels because we are going to interpret it in this way and uh, our production functions depend from our fossil fuels but also from the stock of uh, capital existing in that moment in time. Whatever is produced can be allocated to pay for extracting the fossil fuels to increase the capital stock or finally to consume. If you consume, that increases the utility and the utility increases the welfare. That is what we want to maximize, changing the level of consumptions and to the level of extracting, uh, the level of extraction of the resource at each moment in time. Now, we are going to consider explicitly uh, pollutions and we can see it in two ways. Either extracting the resource uh, or consuming because it is the same in this uh, because there is no stock left in this model so it generates some pollutions pollution accumulate in some sort of stock and then it is the stock that generate uh, some environmental pressure and this is classically uh, obviously the, the idea of uh, carbon uh, emission to the atmosphere so ex uh, consuming in this case of fossil fuels generate some pollution in terms of, of carbon emissions. Carbon emissions uh, accumulate to the atmosphere and this is the stock, this accumulation of, of carbon in the atmosphere that generate environmental pressure. But we can also think of the resource extraction to generate environmental pressure things about uh, again uh, uh, the schist, uh, schist oil well uh, they require a lot of water resources and they generate a lot of local pollution uh, where uh, they are uh, uh, where they are extracted so we can think environmental pressure to be generated directly from in uh, from that moment in time from the extraction of uh, uh, fossil fuels and then this environmental pressure as i anticipated in the previous slides can generate two kind of damages one direct to the utility functions and one in the indirect to the production uh, possibilities and then what can we do uh, to uh, reduce this environmental pressure? Well, we can decide to allocate part of these productions in a cleanup expenditure or uh, uh, using a terminology more, uh, more uh, used in a climate change uh, uh, contest, uh, the mitigation. So we can decide to uh, re reduce the stock of uh, pollutants and hence to reduce the environmental pressure. The important bits here is that these mitigation possibilities are not free. We need to allocate part of what we produce instead of consuming to these mitigation actions. And uh, this employ a new, we'll see that we can think about this as a new trade-off and we can decide, so this is a new control variable because we can decide how much of the share to use for mitigation actions. To sum up, mathematically, we have three state variables, the fossil fuel stocks, the manufactured the capital stocks and now we have all the new pollu pollution stock that we call it with capital A and all the, these three stocks move according to these three equations so the variation in times of the stock is what we extract the variation in time of capital is given by what we produce less what we consume less what we allocate to pay for extraction cost that's what we allocate to pay for our new mitigation options. The variation 
of the stock of the pollutants. It is given by the new pollutant that we, uh, we add each year, less what is the effect of uh, our uh, mitigations, less what here is the natural decay of the pollutants. In many cases, we will see that the pollutant is able to decay by itself with time at a rate alpha, and so the amount that that is uh, that the case depends from the stock itself. We we'll see the importance of this parameter uh, later across the lesson. We have then uh, uh, six uh, uh, other variables. That is the pollution emissions. That depends, as we saw, from the level of extraction and consumption of, of the resource. And we assume that the marginal uh, pollution emissions are, are positive. The uh, pollutions are the opposite reductions from our clean, clean up expenditures. Uh, we have uh, the environmental pressures that depend from the stock of pollutions and the extraction of natural resources. So here, what we are seeing here, it can be all be uh, taught and computed from uh, the uh, from uh, this flowchart. If we have this flowchart in mind, and uh, maybe you are invited to print it or to have it on a, on another screen, you can very easily go from this flowchart to uh, to these equations. We have the extraction cost, productions, and uh, uh, and uh, the utility functions. Finally, we have our free control uh, variables and our objective functions. For each state variable, we have one co-state variable, so we will have what will interpret as uh, fossil fuel uh, uh, price, capital uh, shadow price, and then we will have uh, another, a new uh, shadow price, that is the shadow price of the pollution stock. And I'm asking you, which do you think is the sign of this shadow price? Well, pollution doesn't create a benefit it create what we call it is a is a malus it create a damage so it is somehow intuitive that its shadow of price will be something negative less we have more benefit we have and uh, these are the equation of motions of the core state uh, variables. We are going now to employ the same uh, uh, mathematical tool that we employed before. Even if uh, uh, we have many more uh, uh, variables here, the way we are going to, uh, to solve the problem is uh, exactly the same. And uh, the beauty to use uh, the, the, the flowchart is really that uh, we can really see the, the pathway, uh, the, the, the solutions in a very clear way when we, we think about the, 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 the flowchart.